in this video, I'll be talking with Mitch Altman. Um, recently, I saw Mitch uh, give a presentation on TED Talks, and it blew me away. He said some really intelligent, heartful things. I wanted to share uh, a lot of what we talked about uh, in our online Skype chat with our group and members. For those viewers that may be interested both in what Mitch is doing and in the work that we're doing with Sound of Stars Frequencies. So in the following video, um, we're going to be having a dialogue. Uh, Mitch and I discuss some areas of interest. Um, I have a short preamble before that comes up, so uh, that just lasts for a minute or two and then we jump right into it. I don't usually watch uh, too many TED Talks, and the reason that I don't is because I find that they're often a little bit too conventional, a little bit too mainstream, uh, too canned. I thought it was really interesting um, that some of the folks that they had speaking that were um, presenting messages of merit uh, that were really fascinating were banned. Uh, in other words, they got a chance to give their talk, but um, Ted didn't let it pass. One of those was Rupert Sheldrake, the um, biologist that our group is especially interested in and his ideas on morphogenic fields. When I first saw Mitch Altman, um, I was blown away. Uh, I, I have to say that it was probably one of the best uh, presentations I've seen on TED Talks. And in the following video, uh, you'll see a discussion between Mitch and I. Mitch was good enough, and I feel privileged to have been able to have had a, a very brief chat with him. And so we covered basically two different areas. In the first part of our conversation, we covered an area that's of specific interest, both to our own Sound of Stars Frequencies group, and also to probably a lot of people that are following areas of neurofeedback, biofeedback, brainwave machines, mind machines, that sort of thing. In the second discussion, we're going to talk about something that's very dear to Mish's heart, and that's the idea of building community, and also trying to support each other through things like coping with day-to-day -day stress, issues of depression, etc. I think that the second area is also going to be of tremendous interest to our group for a number of reasons. Um, one of which is that Mish has been involved in a new sort of global effort. Um, it's been labeled different things, but one of the more common labels is the maker movement and hacker spaces. Basically what that has to do with is getting people empowered and encouraged to do things themselves. So you could say it's like maybe one of the best DIY do-it-yourself movements in place currently on the planet. I loved what Mitch had to say, like I said, for all kinds of reasons, but since the beginning of our group, one of the things we wanted to do was encourage our members and users to come up with their own way or to work collaboratively in building simple hardware solutions towards delivering our frequencies. And for most of our members, we know that our frequencies basically um, are soundtracks or their uh, informational uh, tracks that can be delivered through a varying magnetic field. Um, that allow for state change. So, you know, we, we can do things like change our mood, have an effect on our physiology. And for those that are familiar with the art tech, we, we know that what we're working with is different from binaural beats and subliminals uh, or isochronic tones. We're really working with unique technology. I wanted to ask Mitch um, if some of the products that he's been making and if his approach uh, towards the maker and hacker space concept might be incorporated into what we're doing. And on both accounts, the answer was yes. And we have a fantastic conversation. Um, really, really enjoy talking with them. And um, for those of you that are not familiar with Mitch's background, uh, you can find it easily on Wiki. But uh, he's pretty much the primary mover in the global hacker space and the, the maker community. Um, his company is Cornfield Electronics. At the bottom of this video and then the video following, you'll be able to see all of the links in regards to his company and his offerings. The area that I really want you to get excited about, um, if you're using our frequencies, you already know that they can have a pretty strong, phenomenal, positive, mesmerizing sort of effect. A lot of people say that they get visual stimuli induced just by hearing them sonically. Mitch is the only one that I know of on the planet that has created a uh, good standard fare reliable uh, mind machine device. For those of you that may not be familiar with this, brain machines are basically devices that you wear on your eyes and they, they're flashing lights and they uh, induce, a, I suppose you could say it's a, a certain kind of hallucination, uh, Mandela to the fact. I'm not going to go into the details, Mitch covers that. But the basic idea is that 
I want our users of frequencies to have access to a very low cost solution that they can wear over their eyes and that when they're being exposed to our frequencies, either acoustically or through a magnetic hearing field device like a silent emitter, that we might be able to see a real amazing interaction both through the visual stimuli generated from the glasses as well as from the frequencies that we're delivering. So continue to watch the video. I, I encourage you to pay attention to what Mitch has to say. Keep in mind that brain machines, the good ones that would work with our frequencies, can cost you know the average user anywhere from $300 US and up. Mitch offers a pair of uh, my machine glasses that are under five bucks. They work fantastic. So check it out and I hope you enjoy it. Check out the comment section below to access all of his links and to find out how to get his classes. And also following this video shortly will be a video on uh, my discussion with Mitch regarding building communities and coping with daily stresses. When I was talking with Mitch, one thing I should mention is just that unfortunately the computer that I was using to Skype and chat with him was on the verge of a complete meltdown. Um, so a, a good bit of the audio and the video footage was lost, but don't worry because it turns out by a miracle the, the very best items were maintained. So this is what you're going to be watching. Uh, my v visual image doesn't appear um, and my voice drops out sometimes, but everything that you need to see, uh, Mitch's video and his voice, all the key points, they're all there. So I hope you really enjoy this. Uh, this is Donald Adams for Sound of Stars. If you were to um, convey uh, an idea or a sense of what some of the, the visual patterns are like um, that, that some people report seeing, I've, I've heard things like checkerboards and, you know, mandala type shapes. So what, I mean, what, what comes to mind if you were to give some descriptions of, you know, and it's, is it a hypnagogic effect or partially hypnagogic? Oh yeah, it's definitely hypnagogic, uh, but everyone does see something unique. Uh, it depends on your background, because it draws from your past experience, but through your imagination it changes it into something you might not even recognize, or maybe you will. For me, I'm really geeky, and many geeky people see geometry, and in particular, um, uh, like Mandelbrot sets and other kind of fractal patterns because those are just way trippy and really cool. Uh, and since I've been into meditation and explored all sorts of trippy things in my life, uh, I see mandalas, but not just a, 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 like a photo or a drawing mandala, but very dynamic that's maybe spinning around, maybe 3D, multidimensional with lots of colors and moving shapes. Uh, it's really beautiful and when I see those things I like focusing on them and see what they do. Uh, people who are not very geeky uh, draw from things that they may have experienced and pretty much everyone has seen a kaleidoscope. And so most people, if uh, even geeky people, will see kaleidoscope-like imagery. And the trip glasses use red blinking lights. There's nothing magical about red. It can be any color or white. Uh, but even though it's just a single color, red, almost everyone sees lots of different colors, which is kind of interesting, too. And you might see colors that you've been experiencing lately or ones that your favorite colors. It's different for everyone. Um, a lot of people see waterfalls or kind of like in old TV shows, uh, what was that show that had the spiral going around, uh, the, the time machine? Oh, the uh, time tunnel. Whatever. The time tunnel. Time tunnel, that's yeah, it. Yeah, it was a great yeah. show. Eh? Huh. Yeah, it was fun. And so people who've seen reruns of that might see that. Um, uh, there was a, a woman who does a lot of African patterns. She's an artist. And uh, she saw some really interesting African-like patterns that she wanted to immediately go home and start drawing so she could use them in her art. Uh, some people see things that are very representational. That's, that's kind of rare, but it does happen. Uh, just the other day I was at a conference and I always bring them with me to show off. Uh, this guy saw goats. <laughs> wow, that's crazy, man. He likes goats. <laughs> well, okay, so now... Um, so th what the, so is there something happening that, that's that's occurring at a that are at a pretty deep layer in a person's conscious and subconscious when they're using this? What um, now the the particular uh, product that you have the trip glasses? Uh, c can you tell us well, how much does an individual pair cost? Uh, Four dollars on my website. Okay. 
So uh, they're originally $40, but I made all my money back on them, so I'm just making them available. Unfortunately, shipping and handling quite often costs more than uh, the unit itself, but uh, it's just part of the reality of our world. If you're going to buy something from some place, you have to get it to the other place. And uh, Yeah, so anyways, it's pretty reasonable even with shipping and handling. Yeah, well, sure. I mean, yeah, most of the, the um, comparable devices out there are like hundreds and hundreds of dollars more. So for our members, like I, we have uh, we have a, three different uh, YouTube channels, and the main channel's got uh, just over uh, 4,000 members. We have a number of other online venues. I, what I'd really like to do is is get as many of our folks uh, on board, you know, with your technology. And I I'm, I want to make you our uh, you know uh, our poster boy. Now again, I'm not trying to you know stroke your ego, but it's like I'm so impressed uh, with just your approach and your attitude. It's just it's a godsend, especially in in these uh, in these times with everything crazy going on in the world. Oh, thanks. Uh, well, yeah, you're welcome. You know, I. I, I'm a Sagittarius. We don't we don't give idle comments. You know, we only give them to people that earn them. So, um, but but now here's here's one thing I wanted to ask you too. And I, and I don't want to I don't want to go into this for too long. At least not now. Maybe if we were talking in the future and if it's warranted, we can get into it. But um, one one of the things that's happened um, with us is uh, um, we've been developing uh, frequencies uh, that we use either through uh, audio delivery or through a, uh, typically a varying magnetic field, like a, a pulsing uh, uh, varying magnetic field. And so um, each frequency track usually is about 10 minutes in length, and they're, um, they're a topological representation of a targeted state, usually a mental or emotional one. And when I'm designing them on my ends, uh, the, the actual design is it's geometric. And so what we have is we have a organic, uh, moving, uh, geometric representation of a state. Uh, this state might be anything from, you know, what does it feel like when we're optimistic? What does it feel like when things are going our way and we're lucky? And so then the idea is that we take this topology, this geometric representation of a given state, and then we play it back acoustically or through uh, this very magnetic field, that there's effects that are noticed, and, and you know the idea is through mm -hmm. resonant entrainment, the person picks up on something. And so, we've been doing this since uh, publicly 2008, and and we've been getting good results. But one of the there's been a few areas of challenge for us. Uh, one is um, at least half the frequencies sound damn weird. They're, you know, they're, it's not music, it's not entertainment. They're strange sounds. You know, half of them apparently members and users like the sound of it, so they're fine playing it in the background for however, however long. Some of them just sound strange, and so you know sometimes if they're at the office or if they're at home, um, you know sometimes their friends or family like them, and other times it, it weirds them out. And so what we try is we try to come up with a way to uh, provide different platforms for delivery, uh, which would be you know like a silent delivery mechanism. This is where we began to explore the uh, varying magnetic field pulses because now we can convey the information biologically, but there is no audible component to it. But one of the, one of the things that that's been, I don't know, I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it was frustrating, but I would say that it was disappointing, was that when I'm designing these tracks, I've <coughs> I've created on my end. It's a part of my uh, uh, you know device or system. Is so I have a heads up display, and I have something that's very similar to an oscilloscope, and it lets me view not just the graphing of of you know the inherent waves um, or the topology of the frequency, but I I can I can see the extrusion dimensionally, so I can go to three dimensions and, and sometimes higher. This representation of higher dimensions, like different end states, and so all of this. Seems cool. Well, I, I mean, it's it's working well for us, and and we enjoy it all this information embedded in these tracks, but you know what would happen sometimes is people that were more intuitive or more sensitive, they'd write in and they'd say like, oh my God, you know, because there's, there's a phenomenon or an effect very similar, uh, you know, to what we see with, with um, the brain glasses that would, you know, in the early days it was, it was happening to people acoustically. It would, it, the sounds would have a kind of a, a literal auditory Gansfeld effect as visual stimuli. And so when it's as though the, the sounds would begin to solidify, you know, as though the, I, 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 you know, a lot of our viewers are familiar with things like, uh, like chimatics and Hans Jenny and Ernst Kladny, where we know that sound usually, especially pure tones and 
complex tones have a very specific associative geometry to it. So when they were becoming entrained uh, with the use of our frequencies, the associated phenomena would kick in, and sometimes people would think that they were seeing stuff, and they would they would. And I didn't cool. I didn't usually tell people, okay, this is what this track looks like. I just didn't tell them. But every once in a while, somebody writes like, oh my God, I'm seeing such and such. So what I wished wish what I had wished for years was, geez, wouldn't it be nice if we had some way uh, that was cheap, you know, portable, and somewhat rugged to have a way to not just convey this visually, or not, sorry, not just convey this audit in, an, from, in an auditory way, not just deliver the information as a varying magnetic field, but what if, I, what if there was some way to have a way where, you know, users could actually see at least some of the geometry that was in the frequency tracks on an actual uh, viewer, a field screen. And then it occurred to me that, you know, with some of the, the technology out there, uh, we already know that, that we've got some of these like visual renders, or, you know, and they're usually cheap ones where you feed a, a song in you know, to a media player and it, it makes a pseudo-generated pattern to that. But what I, what I had wondered was, you know, what would happen if we uh, had a way to have glasses similar to yours where maybe there was a, a slight modification or chip where maybe it could actually pick up and visually display some of the patterning that were in the tracks and what, how would that affect people? You know, and, and would, would that increase the benefit? My, my gut feeling is that it probably would. I liked your description about when you were talking about, you know, like when they put your glasses on, they're having a very distinctive experience, but it's not a canned experience. It's somewhat um, varying uh, depending on the person, which is very sensible. It makes total sense. And I, I think it's greater value that way. Uh, and I have a feeling that the glasses that you have as they are, because of this, uh, of this effect, it may very well be that the glasses used with frequencies, you know, using headphones or however, or if they're using maybe the, ma the magnetic field emitter, that, that it would have an effect on whatever the visual changes were. But, but I wanted to ask you, I mean, just off the top of your head, generally, uh, would it be very difficult to add any modifications to the glasses that you have now where it might be able to directly uh, pick up some of the information in the frequency and display that visually. I yeah, well, the glasses I have are very, very simple. There's just one blinking red light uh, in front of each eye, and they're both doing the same thing. Um, and they're going along with the sound. They come with headphones, and they have binaural beats uh, so that the pulsing sound correlates to the same pulse rates as the lights. Uh, they're in sync with one another, so the brainwave, the 14-minute meditative brainwave sequence is coming in auditorily and visually. So modifying them to be what you're talking about would be uh, a very different project. Mm. Um, that would cost a bunch more. It'd be pretty interesting to experiment with that. Uh, there's um, a bunch of glasses on the market now. Uh, the most popular one is called Oculus Rift. They're designed for virtual reality. So you put them on, and all you see is um, what a computer shows you over each eye. Well, each eye has a computer screen uh, with a little bit of optics. So it looks like to your when you open your eyes, you see the screens. Uh, but it, it appears as if the information is out in the world. Hmm. And it's a slightly different image on each eye, so it can be parallax, and it, make it makes it seem as if you are immersed in this environment. That's the intent of Oculus Rift. But if they are computer screens in front of your eyes, so it would be very easy to have, if you have an Oculus Rift or something like it, uh, to present information based on the sounds or on um, the magnetic modulated frequencies uh, to go along with that, and you could present that information and guide people along maybe a little bit better with that. I don't know. Or maybe it's just something for the conscious mind to pay attention to while the subconscious part is doing its thing. Mm. Uh, I don't know. It'd be worth experimenting with and see what kind of kind of things could be presented and what kind of experiences people have. You know, among our user base, we have, um, uh, I'd, I'd say that probably the, the majority of users uh, they're on a budget 
and as, as far as investment goes and whatever we're doing, you know, whether they're, they're, you know, if they purchase frequency tracks from us or if they're investing their own money and designing their own hardware, because a big part of our maker community was how to lay these frequencies back in different ways so that we get the benefit from them. And this is where the maker uh, component came in because a lot of members, they would, they would go back into their, you know, garage or backyard and they would fiddle with things. Uh, we have one fellow from Sweden where he took old CPUs uh, out of a computer and he uh, wired them up, you know, to electro, uh, to the wow. uh, earbuds from, uh, from headphones and he just cranked the volume up and it was it was interesting because you know what we've now now what we have is the the crystalline wafer matrix inside these cpus in a sense it's emitting you know enough of this information where uh you know he'd hold it for instance next to his like guitar uh, amp pickup and you could hear it coming through the little cpus so a lot of different kinds of approaches but if now with your i i really i i think that that there's going to be, I'd say, out of all of our members, there's probably, I'm going to guess, maybe 80. And, and it's a global membership, but maybe there's 80 max that have a higher budget. And so they probably would be interested in things like Oculus, probably wouldn't be that tough, you know, to get them to do that. But the wide majority of our members, you know, they're, they're, at, they're middle class. They're people that, that, you know, for the year, they can maybe spend a couple hundred bucks max. And, and you know, whatever they're going to get back for that needs to be, you know, uh, meaningful. And I... I, I really like the idea uh, still of promoting the trip glasses that Cornfield provides because of the cost and, and also they're because cheap. Of, well they're cheap uh, they, they do a good job and also yeah. uh, I, I want to be able to promote uh, you know people that have integrity to our group and the impression I have you know obviously from you is that your head and heart are in the right place but listen if they use the trip glasses as they were and you mentioned that um, that they have some kind of a, a setting already for binaural beats. Uh, if they wanted to play our frequency tracks, and we, one of the things that we can do with our tracks, because of they're just very different from binaurals, they're very different from isochronic, they're completely unique globally, they mesh well. Um, we've, what we found is that for, for a very, you know, uh, strangely, they weave and mesh uh, with everything ranging from Baroque, uh, you know, to I don't like rap personally, but it, they 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 weave really well into these things, and so uh, would would users if they bought your glasses, and the glasses have the presets on them, uh, could they play the frequencies at the same time? You know, through the headset, is that is that, could, can they play frequencies through the headset and just have the the standard? Because I have a feeling that the standard settings for your glasses are going to be quite sufficient for most. Yeah. Well, okay. So, so for users and members that want to use your glass, if they wanted to feed our frequencies into that system, would they do that? Yeah. So there's a couple ways. Um, um, yeah. You just went dark again. Oh, that's okay. I'll fix it. You go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So there's a couple ways that uh, users can do that. So the easiest way is probably instead of uh, the plugging the headphones that come with the trip classes, instead of plugging them into the trip classes, plug them into whatever device is playing your tracks. And uh, that wouldn't be synchronized with the uh, meditation sequence, which the trip classes have, but they might mesh well together. It'd be worth trying. Uh, another thing, if people want to try hacking into it, they could mix the, you know, put a, another uh, input into the headphone jack on the trip classes. There's just a little board there, and if you know how to solder, you can just uh, solder a couple of, actually three wires onto there for stereo, ground, left, and right, and then add the tracks from your end and mix that in with the sound coming from the trip glasses, which is binaural beats uh, that goes along with that same 14-minute meditation. So those are the two ways to do it uh, that I can think of off the top of my head anyways. Um, yeah, well, the, the way they are now, they, they go through a sequence of uh, brainwave frequencies, which are corresponding to a person going from a wake state into a meditation state, hanging out there a while, and then coming out again. Um, and it's the same thing, it's the same sequence every time you use it, and they are blinking uh, the red lights 
in uh, front of your eyes with your eyes closed. So your entire field of vision is covered in red blinking lights at brainwave frequencies. And uh, your brain doesn't really know what to do with that information. So it kind of makes stuff up from your imagination. And people um, all see something unique because we all have unique imaginations. There's some things that are in common because there is... Uh, there are physiological effects happening too, but all of it put together is called the Gantz field effect. And uh, people have been aware of this for quite a while. Uh, there's thing, uh, there's written uh, essays, short little blurbs from as far back as uh, Middle Ages, where someone in a carriage going through trees lining a street or a driveway, the sun is blinking through them. Uh, the person closed his eyes and really liked the effects. Uh, so the thing that's different now and different from the person you were talking about with the machine he made is uh, we can do uh, this very inexpensively with a computer chip programmed to blink at brainwave frequencies, and not just one brainwave frequency, but a sequence. So we can, if you want to, follow along with that sequence and if it works for you, go into the state intended, in this case, meditation. Um, so it's, it's specifically designed for that. I, all, everything I do is open source, uh, so all the plans for it are online. Uh, anyone who is uh, at all skilled in this or wants to learn can take my things and hack them to do whatever they want to do, including change the blink rate and their sound that goes along with it uh, to be not just this meditation sequence, which is what it was designed for, but you can change it to go along with anything in the environment, including sound or an MP3 player or whatever, and there have been people who've done this. Is that where you're at? Yeah, I'd be way curious what people think too, so definitely... Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, one thing, too, I just wanted to mention, uh, I have another uh, project that uh, is just recently a product now called Neuro Dreamer Sleep Mask. And I have a version for meditation and one for sleep and one for helping people learn to lucid dream. But um, with binaural beats, it's sort of the same uh, problem, really, that you were describing with the... Um, uh, the audio tracks that you're talking about, it's not particularly pleasant. It's not musical. It's not like horribly unpleasant, but most people don't find it pleasing to have this kind of sound. Um, and so the trip classes has that sound. It, it's sort of like, I don't know, buzzing. It's not, I don't know, people, people uh, find that it helps, so they, they keep it on there. Uh, but for the NeuroDreamer sleep mask, I generate sound, um, and, and that's all also open source. So on my website, people can download the uh, source code, and, uh, and if they have any questions, they can email me. I'm happy to answer any questions to help people do, uh, you know, hack mine or make this on their own. But what we did is create really what I think is beautiful sounds that are designed specifically to mask the binaural beat frequencies which aren't particularly pleasant. And so you don't even, you're not consciously aware of them at all. And so the music that we created might actually work for your project as well. Because uh, it, it is really good at masking non-musical sounds. And they're still there, you're not consciously aware of it, they're still having their effect, but it sounds really pleasing instead. Well, one of the sounds we have is sort of ocean-like. It's actually technically called uh, a mix between pink noise and beige uh, and brown noise, and we call it beige noise because uh, we just mix them together. Uh, another, though, is just uh, it's a mix of – this is all generated in, uh, in the NeuroDreamer, uh, which has built-in speakers and colored lights and stuff. Um, this is the same kind of idea, but more complex and more pleasing, less less harsh. Uh, they cost a lot more. They're a fabric mask instead of plastic, um, but they're like 70 bucks on my website. But anyways, um, the other sound is generated by them. It's uh, uh, a mix between human voices, a choir sound. We, we, we 
mix it together at various frequencies so it makes a choir-like sound, along with a, a sample of an Indian instrument called a tambura, which is a drone instrument that uh, most people found, find really relaxing. And uh, I love Indian classical music, so I put that in there. And there are Indian classical music musical intervals uh, that are really good for just sort of... Uh, cruising off into space with uh, inner space. And, um, um, and they're also really complex sounds, all this mixed together, so that it masks just about any sound and all you're left with is consciously is something very pleasing. Well, for me, they, they help me uh, go into meditative state, which I've gotten a lot of benefit from throughout my life. I've been meditating since I was 13. I don't need um, any device to meditate. Nobody really does. Uh, it's something hardwired in our brains, just like sleep and being awake uh, or being drowsy. These are states that are uh, we evolve to have, and uh, no one needs a device to do that. But in our modern day, we, we're kind of out of practice in getting into meditative states, and so having a device like this uh, can help people do it. It also is kind of uh, maybe even a trick to give yourself permission to try going into the state in a fun way because as you go along you get this Gansfield effect which you hallucinate lots of beautiful colors and patterns from your imagination. Um, but, uh, but the meditative state is the real goal here um, as well as enjoying it and getting benefit from it. So for me when I meditate I can do lots of different methods there's no like right and wrong way to do it. Well, I guess there's wrong ways to do it if it doesn't work for you, uh, uh, you know. Uh, but there's a lot of ways that you can go into a meditative state. One way is to just pay attention to your breathing, and uh, if you do that long enough, wanting to meditate, you will. Another way is to pay attention to your thoughts. Uh, one method of that is to, every time you have a thought, just sort of mm, let it go by. Don't pay attention to it and just say, okay, I'm just going to let it go by. And if you find yourself at any point drifting with your thoughts, you can just remind yourself, oh, I'm just going to let thoughts go by, including the one I just had. And same with you're watching your breath. Eventually you'll find that you're paying attention to thoughts rather than your breath. Just bring yourself back. No big deal. Another way with thinking, you know, watching your thoughts is follow every single thought that comes along and see where it leads. Uh, no matter how wonderful or how uh, scary or whatever it is, just follow it along and see where they lead. We usually don't do that. Um, that's a, a method that can find things within us that are perhaps more subconscious and bring them to a place where we can think about them. Uh, another way is to just relax every part of your body from head to toe or toe to head, whatever feels good for you. Uh, these and so many other ways are really good ways to get into meditation. And for me, when I'm meditating, regardless of what method I'm using, I feel very relaxed. Uh, the problems of my day-to-day -day life are way less important than they might have seen a little bit, uh, a little while ago. And uh, quite often I find I can gain insight into situations in my life that uh, maybe can use a little bit of insight, like problems I want to solve in a project, uh, interpersonal uh, problems or uh, you know, friction that I might find a way to uh, alleviate and you know, have better interpersonal relationships with the people involved. Um, I mean, we all have situations like this. Um, you know, or have just a flash of insight of a new project I want to do. Uh, I'm an inventor, so I always am looking for cool ways of looking at things and uh, things in the uh, environment and our day-to-day -day lives that maybe can be a little bit better with something I can make, uh, either physical or conceptual. Uh, yeah, so all these, this and more, this is uh, what I get out of meditation. And everyone is unique, so we'll all get different things out of meditation. Um, so helping people find ways of meditating and getting benefit from it is something I like doing.